Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be looking at a pretty major cybersecurity incident that could theoretically affect most Linux systems. Luckily, this was caught quite early on after uh, a couple of people noticed a, a very strange behavior. It was initially discovered by Andrew uh, Frian, I, I, uh, and what he discovered was that there was a strange behavior after updating the XZ library. The SSH on his computer was taking a lot longer, which made him suspicious, and luckily he identified that in fact there was some addition to the repository that seems to be designed to circumvent authentication. Now, most of these links are dead now because GitHub has actually suspended the repository outright in the interests of stopping this from being distributed. And the contributor who has done this, and it does not look like a hack, there have been a bunch of commit requests by this contributor to get this spread absolutely everywhere. The first stage of the malware uh, they they put a commit request for that back in 2023. So either this account was like either the person behind this account was like captured, or this was a very long con. Either as some people have suggested, a state a state sponsored actor who might be doing this for the sake of having a covert backdoor. It's a bit like what the NSA was speculated to have done, uh, or it could be a malicious hacking group just looking to cause chaos. It's a bit scary how easy doing this was, uh, especially as some Hacker News uh, commentators have pointed out that the thing with compression software, there's a lot of complexity to it. So those kind of software will generally contain a lot of very, very low level code that's going to be very, very tricky to read and might not be obvious what it does. So the obfuscation here, because this is a very bizarre looking script, but and this ultimately comes to this, which is primarily, as I understand it, determining whether the platform and the build configuration is right, so that it's more tricky to figure out what it's doing. And then we get this very strange, obfuscated code. Now, I'm not, I'm not into Bash, so I don't totally know how this works, but there is uh, a de-obfuscated version of it that's a bit easier to read. It caused errors. So then the guy who came up with this just submitted a patch claiming that these errors were natural <laughs> and that um, he had uh, fixed the issues, which was actually a great excuse to ship these changes off. So here is how it triggers. So if build is, that just means 64-bit x86, and then uh, we'll build with GCC, so not Clang. And then it's checking, and this is kind of the final step, so that if you were like just trying to test this on a dev system, you would probably not build a deb or an RPM package. You'd probably just build it to your system. But this only runs with this step as well, so even less chance of being caught. And it seems so... There we go. So... It's clever because it doesn't directly, because OpenSSH does not uh, use XZ, because why would it? It's a compression library for those who don't know. Uh, but the hackers, they're not idiots, so they found a way around that. System D, which is the system, uh, the init system for basically every modern Linux distro, does use it. So by getting into System D, it is able to somehow inject itself in and seemingly affect the authentication. Now, it's not, no one has figured out how the exploit actually works. And if you start it without systemd, it doesn't work. So, presumptively what it's doing is it's adding some sort of delay that you might be able to exploit with some other piece that makes the encryption or something. I, I don't really understand. I don't think anyone has totally figured out how this would work. Now, here is where he's attempted to analyze, but so far he's figured out what causes the slowdown, but it doesn't seem like it's known how this would actually be exploited. And then when you log in with the public key, the code is triggered. 
but then it calls the regular authentication. So probably is going to, there's probably, hard, it may have hard-coded a key or something so that the attacker can just immediately log in to any affected system. Now, luckily, this has never been exploited in the wild because this was caught very quickly thanks to this guy. Um, Red Hat's assigned it. The only distros that it could have possibly worked on were Red Hat and uh, or Fedora, which is the derivative, and Debian Unstable, both of which have already yanked. There's a no production system. I think the goal here would have been, and here's the un, this is the deobfuscated script. The goal here would have been for this to have gone unnoticed for another year or so, and it could have made it into some very important distros, could have made it into Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat, and then it would have gotten in to some very major computers and possibly caused havoc. Luckily, it was caught, and despite their best efforts to make this less noticeable to developers, the code has been caught, and it's gone, and really nothing else is going to happen. It's just very concerning, because open source software is really the backbone of the world at this point. You know, about 10% of, or no, 5%, not 10%, maybe 10% one day, of desktops run Linux. But pretty much 100%, 95% of servers, like this website that's hosting this, GitHub, even though it's owned by Microsoft, pretty much every website you go on is running a Linux server. Every data store, your banks. And the problem is these supply chain attacks can be slowly carried out by someone who appears to be, well, in fact, they were until this, a legitimate contributor. It's not known yet what the story is here. I think it's probably going to come out to be state-sponsored because it doesn't, it wouldn't be an effective use of time for a single person to spend two years contributing on an open source project for no pay um, just to do this, because they're not doing it out of the good of their hearts. Uh, the other possibility that I just thought of, thinking of uh, there was an ad blocker, it's called Nano Ad Blocker, and it was a completely legitimate thing until it wasn't. And some Turkish company approached the developer of it and said, hi, I would like to buy uh, this app for quite a bit of money. And he did. And the Turkish company immediately, they, they claimed they were just some ad tech company, uh, they, they added malware that would steal Instagram session cookies, which was then used to sell Instagram likes. Now, I, I can't think they made their money out of it, but that's the kind of setup. So maybe this contributor was either offered a very large sum of money to inject this code or was offered a large sum of money for his uh, identity, I guess you could call it. Uh, we don't know so far, but those are just some uh, theories. Uh, uh, luckily, because this was caught so early, there is a very, very low chance that this is going to affect anyone. There was one other noticed uh, issue was for people using... Max with the homebrew homebrew is basically a package manager that you can download for mac uh the vulnerable version was installed although the good news is it's already been yanked and that it probably wouldn't do anything but if you have a uh, homebrew on your mac uh, you should probably and uh, you should probably just do brew upgrade and that will get rid of that will that will uh, if if it's installed it will make sure that it's the right version and you'll be all fine. So that is going to be all for this video. I hope it was interesting. Uh, bye.